on board the Ramsey. So he just uh, got done with breakfast around six o'clock, and then he was up uh, polishing the rails. That was his duty that morning, mm -hmm. Sunday morning. So it was around you know from seven o'clock to seven thirty. He was doing that, and then uh, getting closer to when the attack started. You know, he started. We heard some explosions, and, you know, like all these guys, they're like, hey, what are, what are you doing practicing on Sunday? And then, uh, sure, pretty good up, like, so, yeah, and he saw the planes, and he saw the Japanese symbol on the plane, the red circle. So he's like, oh, this isn't right. And then uh, he went to his general quarters. He had ordered to go back to the back of the ship where all this, everything was locked up because it was Sunday morning. So they didn't have a lot of anti-aircraft guns on the, on the ship, but he, went there unlocked and he brought out a bolt action Springfield rifle. So they brought those back up and you know they were shooting at these planes with these Springfield rifles. That was no. he said the planes were low enough they could see the pilots so yeah. they were trying to shoot with so he was across whatever they could get a hold of. Yeah. He was across the middle lock so that was across from Fort Island and Battleship Row so the main planes went and attacked Battleship Row and that flew out over his ship and that's where he said he could see the uh, rear gunners faces and stuff like that. And every every one of these guys had the same story. Yeah. There's a favorite book I used to like to get about Pearl Harbor. Whenever the bookmobile came to school, I would go out. Well, that's revealing my age a little bit there. The bookmobile. Uh, we'd go out to the bookmobile and I would check this book out all the time and read about Pearl Harbor, trying to re learn as much as I could, even back then. And uh, and then just listening to his stories, I think he, he started us you know, telling us about it at an early age. And and being that young and hearing those stories, you know, I always had pictured Pearl Harbor, that area being this huge, expansive area and when we finally made it, when we finally went to Pearl Harbor, I was really amazed to see how small <laughs> that whole area is and where the battleships were. It's not a big area. We would go to these lunches, and here we are just in this room with these eight guys, and no one else is hearing these stories. <laughs> it should be out there. So, yeah. so he, yeah, he wanted to keep it. Yeah, going. the motto of the Pearl Harbor Survivor Association was never forget, so he was, I think he was trying to stay with He was proud, stay of, with proud that, of the yeah. service, but he also wanted to, you know, wanted to, people to know about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, I'm, I'm thinking what I was doing when I was 19 and 20, it wasn't that. It was in college, <laughs> yeah. going to classes three days a week, maybe. You know, <laughs> so, you know, here's these guys, you know, same with the, you know, the guys that flew B-17s that are 22 years old, was the oldest guy on there. You know, these guys, so that whole generation really, you know, makes me think more about, hey, this should be told to people. You know, you look at people today, kids today, they don't know any of this stuff. The living history is gone, so we're the living history now to keep that going. But I think we're, yeah, like you said, we're able to put more of a personal touch to it than somebody, I'm sure someone who's, who had a, a relative at Gettysburg or or any other you know, major event like that would, would feel the same way. It's it's not just a, a, a name in a book, it's not a story in a movie, it's not, it's it's actually real for you. Yeah, uh, yeah he wanted, uh, some of his ashes spread at Pearl Harbor for final resting with his, with his buddies. So in, in, uh, on December 7th, 2000, we were there, and we had a nice ceremony out in the, up by the Arizona Memorial, not where his ship was, but it was, it was really satisfying to see that the Navy still cares <laughs> about this special group of veterans. Even back, that was 60 years after mm -hmm. the attack at that point, and, and today it's now, what, 79 years, and it's, it's evidence the Navy still cares as by the project that you're doing now, so we really appreciate it. Just being there was it's just such a, a sense of awe that you're at this place of reverence. It's a it's a memorial to how many you know, two thousand some soldiers and or sailors that died there that day, and everybody's kind of quiet and everybody's reflecting on their own. And it's just real. It's kind of like going to Gettysburg. You, everybody, you don't nobody's laughing or joking. It's just it's real uh, solemn. And I think just I would love to go back again. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad I got there once, at least, and to do what we did, and everybody should go there at least once, just to see it, just to be a part of it. Um, and the whole time I was there, I was just trying to, trying to see things as he might have seen it. And it, was really, it really helped the, uh, the battleship USS Missouri was, was docked in Battleship Row there, about where the Cal USS California would have been docked that morning. So that really helped to give some perspective. And you see this one big battleship there, and try to picture Eight battleships all in this row, and again, it's so small there, and um, everybody should see that <laughs> and, and, and not forget what happened.